Hey there guys, this is Minit Sylvester and welcome back to my channel. So in my last video, I completed an Alexa project with database where you can store the inventory of books you own, retrieve them, update their status and view a list of them at any time. So going on, I'm planning to split my tutorials into a couple of tracks. In one of them, I'll be uploading very basic problem statements and solutions to that and in the other ones, I will continue with more Alexa projects, exploration of more libraries and examples for them, and we'll also be doing a little Phoenix tutorials. So in this video, I'll be doing a beginner friendly problem statement. So that comes under the first track. And I've decided that today we're going to be doing strong numbers. In case you do not know what strong numbers are, strong numbers are numbers which have a unique relationship with the digits that make them up. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example. So here, if you consider 145, the digits here are 1, 4, and 5. So the factorial of 5 is 120, the factorial of 4 is 24, and the factorial of 1 is obviously 1. So when you sum up these factorials, you get 145, which is a number itself, which is why it is a strong number. If you take 124, uh, the digits and the factorials of those digits do not sum up to the number itself. Hence, it is not a strong number. So now that you know what strong numbers are, let us write a program that can check if a given number is strong. And then after getting that correctly, we can think about generating them between a limit. So I'm going to go ahead and create a file. I'm going to name it strong numbers. And let me just adjust the intent in that. Okay, so now let's start off by defining a module. And my module name is strong numbers. And the first function, I'm going to call it introduction. It is not going to do much, but just introduce what the program can do. So it is going to say, Hi, what can I do for you? And for now, as I said, the only choice it can provide us is checking if a number is strong. So I'm going to say check strong. And we have to convert the incoming input to integer. Before that, we have to take away the trailing new line. So once we have that, we're going to pass it to the function which will generate it to do the operation. So I'm going to call that function do the thing. So now let's go ahead and write that function. So it will have a single parameter choice. So we're going to have to do a case or choice. So if it is one, then I'm going to say check strong. So before that, we have to get the input. So we'll say number equals. So this will be enter the number. So we have to do this every time we get an input. And let's pass in the number. Oh, All right, then let's go ahead and write our check strong function. So def check strong, it will have a number. So we have the number, we need to get the individual digits. So we'll say digits equals I'm going to pass it on to another function and I'm going to call it calculate digits. We'll pass on the number and an empty list. So what I'm planning to do is get the digits from these number and add it as individual elements inside the list. So how will we do that? Let me just quickly open up a terminal, run IEX. So I'm going to say n equals 145. So when I say divide n, 
by 10 I get 14 so when I say reminder I'm getting the last digit so this is how I'm going to do it so the reminder is the last digits which I'm going to put in the list and the number is passed onto the same function again and that will be divided and then I'll get 4 and it will go on till the number is completely done and becomes 0 so to explain in a better way the first it is going to be 145 and an NP list so the first time I get the reminder I'll get 5 and I divide it by 10 the number will be 14 so the next time it comes into the function it is going to become 14 and I'll store the last digits in the list so it will become 5 and the next time it comes in it is going to be 1 and the list will be 4 and 5 then the number becomes 0 the list will be 1 4 and 5 so this is what I'm planning to do I hope you have a good understanding of this all right then so let me go and write that function calculate digits in the number and the list the so last digit is reminder of number divided by 10 and new number is the number divided by 10 so the new list has to be constructed you know they're immutable in elixir so when you change the data structure you have to capture the result in a new list so that is a new data structure in our case it's a list so I have to say last digit and the already existing list so this syntax will add an element at the first but it doesn't really matter in our case so I'm just adding it at the first so now all we have to do is call the function again so this time it will be with new number and new list so let's go ahead and define another clause for this function so when the number becomes zero that is everything is added to the list I'm just going to make this a one-liner and this is how you make this a one-liner of those the syntax a comma and then the do becomes like this and I'm just going to say return the list so this will handle the case when the number is completely divided so that is our calculate digits function so the reminder of the number I'm just going to run more time the reminder of the number when it's divided by 10 gives you the last digit the division of the number itself gives you the new numbers so that is number over here and then you keep adding it onto the list until the number becomes zero so I'm just going to halt over here and I'm going to say inspect digits so I'm going to halt and run the program just to see you know everything's okay so I'm going to compile my file which is strong numbers.ex so we'll call the function introduction and the only option is check strong so that is right so the number is 145 so I should be expecting the program to inspect a list with 145 as elements so here we go and there we have it so we're on the right track up to now so let's just get rid of the terminal now and go ahead with the factorial operations so now that we have digits as a list we can use the map function that enum provides us so let me quickly open up the terminal to say what that is all right so i'm running iex and i'm just going to demonstrate what map function can do so when i say enum dot map the first argument is an enumerable so in our case it's a list 
So I'm just going to say a list of one, two, and three. And the next argument is a function with the instruction on what to do on each of these element. So it is an enormous function. So I'm just saying multiply each of these elements by two. So what this will do is map takes every element of the list performs a specified operation on them. So we should have a result of two, four and six. And there you go. So this is what we want, except that we want to calculate the factorial instead of multiplying it by two. So let's get this up first. So all I want is the list is digits and the function is factorial of x. So factorial is going to be a different function. So let's go ahead and write that. So this will be a number and a result. So I'm just going to take the normal approach. I'm saying factorial of so I'm calling the factorial function again. This is a recursion. So number minus one and number star the result. So I'm also going to pass in a one over here. So let me just tell you how this is going to work. So let's say if we have a digit four, the so four from 145 and the two arguments that will go into the factorial functions are four and one. So this will be the first thing though the next time when it comes to the factorial function it will be 3 and 4 that is 1 into 4 and the next time it comes in it will be 2 and 4 into 3 12 so this will go on but it keeps going on because it is not having in condition so I'm going to define a different clause over here so make sure you describe it above because it has to recognize the difference between these two functions. So if the number is one, I'm just going to say return the result. So the way we have devised it is if the number is not exactly equal to one, the function is going to call itself again, reducing the number by one and multiplying the existing result with the number. And when it is one, it is just returning the result. So there's no way that a zero could occur because we stop it at one. But the only way that a zero could occur into this is if the number itself is zero. So we have to handle that too. So I'm going to say factorial if it is a zero. I don't care what the result is, just return one. So an underscore is when you know something is going to come, but you don't really care what value it carries. So in that case, I'm returning one. So that will be the factorial function. And let's go ahead and check it out. So I'm just going to do a quick check again, just to make sure everything's going properly. So I'm going to say factorials equals the result of this. And I'm going to inspect it. So it will be factorials. So let me just quickly run this. So it is introduction. So there is a typo, we'll fix it. So for now, let's just go ahead to the program. So yeah, the only choice we have, so one, four, and five. And we have a list of factorials of these digits, so that's good. Now we have to sum the elements of this list, and that's actually really easy. So all we have to do is pass on the resulting data structure to another function called sum. So I'll just rename this variable to sum of factorials. And we don't have to inspect it anymore. So now we have to check if sum of factorials equals the number itself, then I'm just going to do true. Else 
it's false. So I'm going to capture the returning value. I'm returning a value because it'll be useful when we do the generation. So I'm just going to say result equals and we have to fix a typo over here. So it's introduction. So if result equals no, it's a boolean. So if result, then we have to put otherwise, I'm just going to copy paste this. So we just add a not over here. So we should be able to check. If a number is strong or not so let's go ahead and do it so i'm compiling my file yeah so factorials is unused where am i using factorial line number 23 okay so that is a mistake so we'll get rid of that and we'll compile the file again So introduction. So yeah, I'm going to check strong and 145 should return 145 is a strong number. Yo, our program works. So just to be sure, let's try another number. And I found a very, very big one over here. So 40585 is a strong number. So let's give it a try. So I think it would be better if we call the introduction function again. Yeah, so I'm going to compile again so that it reflects the change that I did here. Yeah, so strong numbers dot introduction. So this will keep going. So there is a problem. So let's give another option. We'll call two and we'll say exit. And we have to add another case over here. If it's two, just print goodbye and leave. Don't do anything else. So that will be a good end clause. So I'm sorry to say this, but we're gonna have to compile again. strong numbers okay so we have a module numbers dot introduction so I want to check if it's strong that's one so one four so I'm talking about the number four zero five eight five four zero five eight five and it is a strong number so what we have done is correct now it is Going to the introduction function again so you see this is actually good now you can choose if you want to do it again you know do one of the operations or you can choose exit so exit is two so i'm saying exit and it says goodbye so that is neat except for one thing we need a new line over here so now we have a program which can check if a number is strong or not for you now let's go ahead and try to generate other uh, strong numbers between a limit so generating strong numbers is going to be an option exit is the last option by default so i'm going to change it to three and in the second we'll say generate strong so we have to change it over here so this is going to become three and in two, it'll be generate strong number, lower limit, and upper limit. So let me quickly show you how this is going to work. So let's say I define a lower limit of one and 
upper limit of 100. So when I use this syntax, it becomes the range. And ranges have a protocol which is familiar to us, enumerable implemented on it. So you can use the enumerable module to actually perform functions on each of these elements or specific ones based on the conditions. So this is all that we need. We're going to iterate through the range, check if the number is a strong number, and if yes, we're going to print it out. So let me get rid of the terminal and let's go ahead and get the inputs over here. So the low limit equals and I'm actually sick of writing this every time. So I'm going to convert it into a single function. So I'm going to say convert to integer and so what's coming in is a string so all we have to do is take the string remove the trading new line and convert to integer so now we don't have to keep writing this stuff again and again we'll just pass it on to our custom function and we have to get the upper limit. So let's write the generate strong number function. So it has a lower limit and upper limit. in a module and I'm going to use the each function so from this will be the range and then we have to define a function so we have a function which can check if a given number is strong or not so all you have to do is call it on each of these function so this should be easy so I'm just going to say if check strong of that, let's call it number over here. Of that number, then put just what we did in our previous function. So number is a strong number otherwise numbers so this should work so let's try that I'm opening up a terminal and I'm running IEX compiling the file so there is a syntax error which is possibly a missing end I guess yeah All right, let's go ahead, compile the file. Yeah, now we're good to go. Mr. Introduction. So I want to innovate now. My lower limit is one, upper limit is 100. So none of it is a strong number. So that is not good. We don't want to do anything if it's not a strong number. 
so this should be better Sort of introduction now we'll say two and now I'm going to increase the limit let's say from hundred to ten thousand and one forty five is the only number now we can keep increasing the limit and we forgot to call our introduction function after this so that should make it pretty Production and generate. I'm going to put in a larger number this time. I don't know. There we go. And now it asks us again, what can I do for you? So that is neat. And that is the end of our strong number generation. So this is my version of generating strong numbers in Elixir. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, please subscribe to my channel. And otherwise, if you have any queries or any corrections that you want me to do, please feel free to comment. So until next time, this has been Sylvester signing off.